Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at PCR, the process behind it and the applications of it. And as part of this video, I was lucky enough to go to the University of Kingston and have a go at doing PCR in their benchtop machine at their STEM Outreach Centre. If you want more information on that, then it is linked in the description below. PCR, or polymerized chain reaction, is done in vitro. This reaction is done in glass, outside of a living organism. It is the cloning of DNA via PCR, and this can be used to amplify very small amounts of DNA, allowing us rapid diagnostic testing, DNA fingerprinting, and the ability for DNA modification. PCR is an automated process that can take place on small benchtop machines, so is readily available in the lab. For the reaction to take place, you start with some template DNA. This is the DNA that is going to be copied. We need some DNA primers. These are short sections of DNA, roughly 20 to 30 bases, which are complementary to opposite ends of different strands. To grow the DNA strands, we need some DNTPs. This is just a mix of the four different bases, A, T, C and G. We need a DNA polymerase. This is the enzyme that is going to build the new strands of DNA. It will very quickly build new strands based on the template DNA. Often this is TAC polymerase, which is from extreme files and works at a high optimal temperature. And lastly, we need a buffer. This is to control the pH of the reaction and make sure that it stays within the optimal range. The reaction uses very small volumes. This can be done in a benchtop thermocycler. I was lucky enough to be able to go to the University of Kingston, the STEM Outreach Centre, and see all of their PCR machines. Here we have their simple PCR machine sitting on a bench with the computer controlling next to it and the gel electrophoresis equipment. There are several stages to the PCR reaction. It starts with denaturing the DNA strands. This is done at a high temperature around 95 degrees and it separates the DNA strands. This is done by breaking the hydrogen bonding between the strands. Next stage is annealing. This is done at a slightly lower temperature, around 55 degrees, although every single reaction will be slightly different. During this process, the primers will join to their complementary sections of the template strand. At opposite ends of the different DNA strands. These primers will act as a starting point for the elongation. DNA polymerase acts by building on to existing DNA. DNA polymerase can only add bases to existing strands, to the ends of an existing strand. And then we have elongation. This is where the new DNA will be synthesized. This runs at optimal temperatures for the TAC DNA polymerase. We will end up with two identical copies of the template strand. These two new identical copies can then go on to be the template for the second cycle of the reaction, where we will then end up with 
four strands. This will keep going and going and going until we have enough DNA to either diagnose something or use in another stage. It can be set individually for each specific type. They can be changed using a computer and you can set the temperatures, you can set the number of cycles and you can dictate exactly how many cycles, stages and different temperature each PCR cycle goes through. So that is specific to your reaction and specific to your needs. The PCR cycle is repeated 20 to 40 times generally until the DNA has been copied millions of times. This DNA can then be used in the identification of people, pathogens or diseases. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.